Hello everyone, Forex here, in this video we'll be talking about dialogue creation in Arma 3. As always, some notes before we begin, just so that we are all on the same page. A dialogue in the real world usually means communication between several people. However, in Arma we are talking about something else, a part of the user interface that allows the player to interact with the mission, or at least the mission can let the player know what is going on. Dialogues include different texts, pictures and frames, buttons, sliders, boxes and selections and provide the mission creator both the graphical interface for the mission and the means with which to make the mission respond to the choices made by the user, usually by calling a script with the given parameters. I would like to inform you about the difficulty of this subject. Dialogue creating is no laughing matter, it's usually not a job for 5 minutes for most people and it's probably one of the most advanced techniques that I described on the channel to this date. I'm not saying that it is super complicated or impossible to do, but if you are thinking about making a complex trading menu for players or something like that and you've never seen dialogues before, you are probably going to spend quite some time customizing the code. I will do my best to show you how dialogues behave and what aspects I think are important, but you should have in mind that making dialogues for the first couple of times takes some time. For those of you who are already familiar with the code and are only looking for class templates, please head over to Steam Workshop. Karel Mozicki, one of the biz developers, he is behind Zeus, 3D editor, most Arma 3 functions and modules and much more, and he has a great mission example with all dialogue controls and their styles. In this tutorial we will keep things very simple. I will try to make the easiest, simplest dialogue that works, and most of the work will include just copy pasting an already prepared code. That way we can quickly have a base for future videos where I will start complicating things, we'll talk about class inheritance, multiple controls of the same type, I will probably add some more types of controls and I'll try to show you how to structure bigger dialogues so that you always know what's happening in your code. The dialogue will consist of two things, a text field and a button. It's not much, but it's good enough for a start and trust me, there will be a ton of explaining anyway. Please note that the code I provide here is designed only for this sole purpose. If you want to make for example two buttons or replace the text with an image and you aren't familiar with dialogues, I recommend you to wait for future videos because simple copy pasting the code multiple times will not give you multiple texts and buttons. Let's start right now. Go to your mission folder, documents, arma3 missions, your mission name. We will now create three new files. One we already know, description.ext, and two new ones, defines.hpp and dialog.hpp. As always, make sure to get the extensions as well as the file name. We will use defines.hpp to define basic dialog styles, fonts and objects, and dialog will contain the dialog configuration itself, and the description.ext will link both of those to the mission itself. First, we'll open defines.hpp. Any text editor will do, I'm using Notepad++ and you will copy the code from the pastebin link down below the video. There are basic definitions of the basic types and styles of dialog controls and settings. By default, these are defined as numbers and codes, but because dealing with hexadecimal codes would be very frustrating in dialog creation, we can assign names and words to them to make much better sense in what we want to make. So for example, when we want to decide the text alignment, we don't have to remember the hexadecimal code for each side, and we can use ST left, right or center. And that goes for all lines here, they only serve us as basic definitions of what is what. The names given to the code can be changed, but to avoid confusion between content creators, they generally keep the same names throughout the missions. So I really recommend you to just copy paste the entire thing and not mess with anything. You will make it much easier for yourself and all others who will happen to see the code. Alright, save and close. We can open dialog.hpp. This is a place with the entire dialog itself. A dialog is a layer of user interface that is manipulated by controls. These controls are what makes a dialog the real thing you see on the screen. A button, a text, an image, a frame, a slider, all of these are dialog controls. And the dialog class itself doesn't really contain anything special. 
So we'll name the dialog my first dialog. The name can be pretty much anything as long as it's one word with no special punctuation or extra signs and doesn't start with a number. IDD is a number specific to the display layer, but because we aren't doing any special stuff with layer handling on or changing, we can just set it to minus one, which is in a way a synonym for nothing or empty space or just a number that we do not need to use. If you don't want to use minus one, I usually pick numbers between 800 and 999. Moving enable decides if the player can move the dialog around on the screen. And I set it to false here. I usually recommend locking the dialog on place and only allow moving smaller parts or text hints, but it's entirely up to you how you design your dialogues. Enable simulation enables or disables the world simulation in the background. If we set it to false, the world objects will not be simulated while the dialog is opened. Now for the controls themselves. This is the place where the actual definitions are going to be. Before I proceed though, let me mention what I'm about to do and why it's important. Most tutorials I found about dialogues give you a different code than me. They would first define classes like RSC text, RSC button and then a dialogue with controls like my first button and my first text, which are both very short. And if you've seen those tutorials, you might be confused because I have copied the RSC text and RSC button classes straight up into the dialog controls. Let me assure you, others are not wrong. I'm not wrong either. My code is technically worse, but it's easier for you to understand it. And once I explain this dialog and will be making another one in the next video, I'll show you what is the difference there and why it makes quite a big deal how you structure your dialogues. So for now, just bear with me, I will show you a simple dialogue and later we will go to the ones in other tutorials and I will explain why they are more complicated but also better to use. So for now, I copy pasted two control classes into the dialogue, one called RSC text and the other RSC button. They both have quite a few parameters to set up, I will leave comments for each one of them and here in the video I'll just mention the most important ones. We'll start with text first. Lines type and style define what the text actually is and how it looks. We know that we want the text to be just a static box with everything aligned to the left. You can see that we are using definitions from defines.hpp and this is why they are so important, because now you don't have to deal with numbers and extra codes. IDC is again a number for the control manipulation and display, but since we aren't really doing much with the text, we can use minus one again. The next four parameters are extremely important and I will definitely talk more about them in some later videos as they set the position of the text. X is the left right axis, Y is the up down axis and the values go from 0 to 1 where a 0 means upper left corner of the screen and 1 is the lower right corner. At least on one screen resolution that's true. For other resolutions, the actual numbers for lower right corner of the screen can be different. And once you look deeper into that, you'll find that it can actually be pretty tricky to place dialogue on the screen so that it fits on all monitors. But we don't have to deal with that today, we'll just use 0.5 and 0.5 for the screen center. W means width and H is for height, meaning setting how big or small the control will be. This is crucial for sliders, frames or images, for the text not so much, so I made it just big enough to display the text without problems. Font is again a font name defined in defines.hpp and size x is actually the size of the font. Again, the numbering system follows different rules than everything else where size 0.04 is actually quite big and definitely big enough to read. Colors are selected in a standard RGBA format with values from 0 to 1. The text line defines what text we actually want to display here. The RSC button shares a lot of parameters with the text actually, the IDC type is type button, there's a text as well, position of the screen, font type and size, all the same. 
There are also many coloring possibilities. You can choose different text colors, background colors, shadow color. You can also play sounds on clicking the button. I think that all those parameters are quite understandable right away and I will add some comments to it as well for you. There's also offset parameters, that is displacement from the original position so that the button can be visibly clicked and it will actually move. The last line is action and that is what happens when the button is clicked. Right now I set it to closing the dialog itself, which is the simplest thing that we can do here. Beware of two things here, the entire action is in quotes and that means that whenever you want to use quotes in a command you will have to pay attention to these extra quotes. So for example if I wanted to display a hint I will have action quotes hint double quotes text message double quotes quotes semicolon. Beware of that pay close attention to the quotes. Last step we need to do is to go into the description.ext file and add two short lines where we link everything to the game. And then we can test the dialogue and see how it actually looks in the game. A couple of warnings and reminders. All the dialogue parts and definitions are a part of description.ext and in some way behave like a config file. Any errors or unexpected problems will result in the game crashing with an error message. This can make dialogue creating very frustrating, especially if you aren't sure about what you're doing and can't fix the errors in the files. So let me mention some of the basic rules for you. When naming classes or any of the components, keep each name a one word without any unnecessary signs or numbers if possible. Notice that even our dialogue class is one word, simply because having spaces in the name is not allowed. Pay attention to semicolons and make sure all of them are on the right place, as well as brackets that include individual parts of the dialogue. If it isn't really required, there is no need to make any changes in defines.hpp and also remember that the lines we added to description.ext that include both files to the mission, those lines do not end with a semicolon, unlike most of the other stuff for Arma. We'll end here for now and more dialogue creating will be for another tutorial where I want to talk more about class parents and how that works in dialogues and we should get on the level of other tutorials on the internet that I know of. But we'll have the advantage of knowing how these things behave and not just how to use them. So that's it for this video, I'll see you in the next one, comment, like, share and have a great day.